Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us look at the next problem. So, here a couple of compounds are given and uh, the question asked is, the compound that gives precipitate on warming with aqueous silver nitrate is. So, that is what is given here. We have four different compounds. All the compounds have bromine atom that is present here. So, out of all the four compounds, which one will give precipitate with silver nitrate on warming? In other words, what is the question that is being asked is, which bromine is easily replaceable? So, that is the question we have to answer. If we can figure it out, what is the bromine, uh, in which compound the bromine can be easily replaced, that is going to be our answer. So, here if you look at the first compound, the first compound is highly an aromatic compound. So, that is it is nothing but the bromobenzene. This is a very, very stable compound and the bromine uh, can never be lost as a Br minus ion. So, this does not happen. So, that means this compound does not dissociate into the, see when the bromine leaves, what we are going to get is basically we are going to get a phenyl cation. So, this phenyl cation is extremely unstable species. So, that is the reason this breakage does not happen. So, that is the reason the bromine is never lost in this particular case. So, that means the compound A that is the bromobenzene does not give out the bromine atom easily. Similarly, when we go to the this cyclopentadienyl system, here also the bromine if it is uh, lost, if it has to be lost, it should go as a Br minus ion. So, we are going to get a positive charge here and we only have 4 pi electrons in this system and there is a positive charge. We already know 4 pi electron systems are quite unstable systems. They are anti-aromatic in nature. So, when they are anti-aromatic in nature, obviously we are not going to even talk about whether the bromine is lost or not because it is going to be highly unstable system. So, this also will not uh, lose that uh, bromine atom easily. And let us move on to the last one. Instead of C, we are going to see, uh, let us see the fourth one. So, this is nothing but the perid pyridine derivative. So, this again is an aromatic system very similar to the first one. So, we already know aromatic systems, uh, the bromine cannot be easily lost. In other words, this also will not give the bromine atom very easily. So, A, B and D are ruled out and none of them can give the bromine atom. So, the only thing left out is C. So, if you look at C, if the bromine atom is lost, what we are going to get is we are going to get a carbocation and we already have a 6 pi electrons that is present here. This is also sp2 hybridized carbon atom. So, we have a cyclic system, conjugated system which is uh, having 6 pi electrons. So, it fulfills all the aromatic uh, characters. So, this compound is going to be quite stable. In other words, if it loses the Br minus ion, when it loses the Br minus ion, it is going to form a very stable aromatic product. So, in other words, that reaction occurs very readily. So, when the bromide ion is lost, on treatment with uh, AgNO3, we can easily see the precipitate, silver bromide precipitate is formed very easily on warming. In other words, C is the one which will be converted to the uh, silver bromide on heating with silver nitrate. So, that way we can easily find out based on the aromatic principle, we can explain how this reaction actually proceeds and our answer is C. Let us move on to the next problem. So, in this problem, we are going to find out what is the correct match for the products of the reaction in column A with the product that is formed in column B. So, here in column A, we have four different compounds. In the first one is nothing but a cyclooctatetraene. So, we have a 8 pi electron system. First compound that is treated with potassium two molecules of potassiums are uh, reacted, two atoms of potassiums are reacted with this particular uh, cyclooctatetraene. What is the compound that will be formed and whether it is going to be uh, aromatic or arom uh, anti-aromatic that we will see later. So, in the column B, what we are getting is we have four different uh, categories. One is aromatic, the other one is anti-aromatic and uh, in the third one, we have a non-aromatic and the fourth one is homo-aromatic. So, we have in column B, four different categories of products are given and in column A, four different kinds of reactions are given. So, in the second one, 
the cycloocta tetraene reacts with the sulfuric acid. So, the first one is basically a basic system or a basic reaction, the second one is a acidic reaction. So, these are all the two different types of reactions and in compound 3 we are going to heat this compound, there is a bicyclic system which we are going to heat and we are going to see what is the product we are going to get and in the fourth one we have a tetracyclic system that is again treated with the basic system. So, this is the information given in the problem, based on that we have to identify what is the correct combination. So, that means the reaction 1 leads to aromatic product or anti aromatic product the reaction 2 leads to what type of product, reaction 3 leads to what type of product. So, that is the question that is being asked and uh, when uh, we are going to solve this problem, one thing we have to remember what is the reagent that is used and based on that reagent what type of reaction will occur, based on that we have to say the product is going to be aromatic or anti aromatic or homo aromatic. So, let us look at the first reaction. The first reaction is a basic reaction as I mentioned, potassium is a very strong uh, uh, base. So, this abstract two hydrogen atoms from the cyclic system. So, what we end up is basically we end up with the anion. So, two potassium atoms are used, two hydrogens are going to be removed. So, we will end up with the total, here we have three pi bonds, so three pi bond is equivalent to six pi electrons. So, 6 pi electrons and uh, every anion the negative charge has 2 electrons. So, 6 pi electrons and 4 electrons here put, uh, put together we have 10 pi electrons that is present. So, when we have a 10 pi electrons we already know 4 n plus 2 pi electron rule here we replace uh, n with 2. So, 4 into 2 8 plus uh, 2 is uh, 4 into 2 8 plus 2 is 10. So, total 10 pi electrons means this is a aromatic system. So, the first reaction is going to give us a product that is aromatic in nature. If we move on to the next one, in the next one what we are going to see is basically the addition of proton because we are going to add one more hydrogen atom to this one. So, that makes one of the carbon into a sp3 hybridized carbon atom. So, what we are going to get in these kind of cases, we are going to get a homo aromatic compound, but this compound is not a aromatic compound because we have a sp3 hybridized carbon atom present in this particular system. And when we go to the third one, on heating this bicyclic system, we are going to get, uh, get a cycloocta tetraene compound is going to be formed. So, this compound is basically a non aromatic compound. And uh, when we go to the last one, here again uh, the treatment with uh, base uh, 2 potassium leads to formation of uh, dianion. So, the total number of pi electrons if that is present in this system, if we calculate there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 pi bonds are there. So, total 12 pi electrons and we have 2 plus 2, 4 more electrons are there. So, total we will get 16 pi electrons are going to be there which is anti aromatic in nature. So, based on that we can actually relate and uh, the A is the correct answer, the product from the first reaction is aromatic in nature, in the second one we are going to get a home aromatic compound, in the third one we are going to get a non aromatic compound and the last one is anti aromatic. So, with that we with these kind of reactions we can also find out how aromatic and non aromatic compounds are formed and what are the criteria for the formations all those things we can see. This is for the aromaticity module, uh, we can put the workload problem number later on. So, whatever is the number we have to just add this number here. Uh, so, let us look at the next problem, the intermediate A and the major product B for the given reactions are, here is the reaction that is given we have a bromo anisole derivative, the bromo anisole derivative is treated with a strong base LDA and uh, in the presence of a anion, melanate anion, we end up with a intermediate or a compound A first and this is now later converted to product B. So, we are going to find out what are all the reaction because still in the reaction medium we have a strong base. So, this is one of the things we have to keep in mind that what will this strong base 
will do for this particular intermediate the A will undergo some change to give B. So, that happens in the presence of the base itself. So, we have 4 different choices are given 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, if you look at very carefully uh, in one of the case we have a substituent added to a carbon which is away from the bromine uh, where it was actually present. So, this carbon is basically called as the ipsocarbon and uh, this is the ortho carbon to the bromo group. So, the addition uh, or the melanate anion adds to this particular ortho carbon that is one of the case and in the other case it actually happens on the ipsocarbon itself. So, this is how the reaction actually takes place we are going to end up with the two different sets of products and we are going to find out what is the actual uh, the LDA's role in this particular case and uh, how uh, the melanate anion adds. So, these are all the two things we are going to see in this particular case this reaction uh, was asked in the December 2017 question paper. So, let us look at how the products will be formed. The first step is we have a hydrogen which is present in this aromatic system. We have an LDA which is a very strong base. So, the strong base abstracts the this particular hydrogen atom to form the carbanion. So, this is the first step which is happening in the presence of the base. So, once this is formed then what will happen is this undergoes elimination of this bromide ion to give a benzene derivative. So, this is one of the important uh, intermediate that is present in the aromatic uh, compounds. Basically, whenever a, one of the nucleophilic substitution reactions of aromatic system involves benzene formation. So, this is again uh, that example for this particular reaction. So, once the benzene is formed it can be attacked by the nucleophile. So, this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction aromatic nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, the anion attacks one of the benzene carbon atom. So, the carbon anion of the melanate ester attacks it and we end up with the carbon carbon bond formation. So, there is a carbon carbon bond formation happens in this particular case and uh, once this anion attacks here this particular carbon gets a negative charge. So, a carbon anion is formed on the adjacent carbon and this adjacent carbon now attacks the electrophilic ester carbonyl carbon unit. So, that is how the intramolecular attacks takes place and we end up with a enolate anion is formed in this particular case. So, that leads to the final rearrangement of uh, hydrogen atoms, rearrangement of electrons that leads to our final ester derivative as shown here. So, this formed anion undergoes rearrangement is a crucial thing in this particular case. So, we end up with a corresponding ester derivative.